problem you solve. Sure, John, it's great to be here. And, and Aviatrix is a cloud native networking software company. And we help enterprises scale their private networks into the public cloud. And that's a really hard challenge that people are struggling with. Everyone has a cloud strategy. And so our software lets you have simplified scalability, connectivity for any type of architecture, whether it be hybrid or otherwise, as well as end-to-end -end network security. And so what's the core problem that you solve? I mean, is it networking? Is it yeah. sharing? Yes, so um, what we have seen from our customers, you know, when they first started the hybrid cloud, they would always go to the cloud providers, being AWS, Azure, or Google, and they set up their first encrypted tunnel to set up a hybrid environment. But as they grow, either by the need of you know, the growing billing that they need to have chargeback, they need to set up a separate environment for their different line of business, or they have the need to do segmentation for application security. So as all these different reasons for uh, growing the environment and to build a hybrid cloud for a growing environment is actually very challenging. Typically it takes weeks our customer telling us to set up one environment, to stand up one environment. And today's traditional solution requires an edge router change for every time they set up environment. And edge router change requires change control. And if something wrong is a business disruption. So a lot of customers don't want to do something like that. They're always nervous about it. So we bring in the solution that not only reduce the deployment time from weeks to minutes, but also deploy it in a way that completely mitigate the risk, the business disruption, and allow them to scale, allow them to do chargeback, allow them to bring different uh, line of business to cl cloud very easily. So you spent so, 13 years at Cisco, so you know yes. a little bit about edge routers and yes. you know, these you know, changeovers are, are serious business. Yes. What specific use case do, are you guys addressing? And just to walk me through, uh, a potential customer situation, yes. why they would use you, is it all software, is there hardware involved, can you just drill down on that? Yeah, so we deploy a virtual appliance, and the specific problem, I'll give you an example, uh, we have a customer that, um, they have developers, and developers go to CIO, says, oh, I want my own environment, um, because, um, because of difficulty, challenge of setting network, uh, you know, compute and storage are very dynamic, very easy to set up, but network go through ITs and go through the change controls on the edge router, right? So it's very controlled It's like going to the airport, you got to take your yes, shoes off, that's put right. your stuff through the conveyor exactly. belt, it's like So they, they end up having very few environments and there are issues with accidentally deleting each other's uh, instances and there are issues about they're getting $150,000 a month the bill and they don't know who spend what. Okay, How so is it? Pain in the butt, it's pain expensive. The butt. Yes, and, and there's no accountability. Very difficult, to very difficult, there's no accountability. So the surety, the business owners want to uh, see, you know, for a particular project, how much money it takes to develop, to maintain, to deploy, right? And they're without a separate accounts and environments, so there's no way of doing that. Um, so we uh, solve that problem. Um, that's one of the examples. So you stand yeah. up networks, basically. Yes, we stand up environments and stand up the network. And the part of Stephen mentioned cloud native is that um, cloud is actually a different playground. It's a different stack that we believe that requires a new generation of products and innovation. The old, uh, you know, traditional routers virtualized, put it in the cloud, is completely unaware of the underlying infrastructure. Remember these cloud providers, they provide the underlying infrastructure. You have to play into it in order to be functional. And most of these traditional vendors, they put their stuff out there, and even if you configure them, they're completely not functional until you set up the routing table. You know how to do, to uh, build the connectivity to the rest of the environment. So that part, we take care of that. That's one of the uh, cloud native. We use the APIs, use their services to build a scalable uh, solution. Yeah, and timing, timing's everything with a startup. You guys are coming into this at an interesting time. You've got you know, sort of 
getting to the cloud, Amazon a couple years ago said everything is, is, a, is a virtual private cloud, right? So I've got to understand VPNs. You've now got IT organizations who are accepting that the public cloud's got to be part of their strategy, hybrid cloud. I've got to be able to, I could start in the cloud, but I want to come back and talk. You guys are kind of coming at this at, the, at kind of the right time, and we, we look at how fast everything's moving here. You then augment that by saying, you don't have to just you know, learn all this new technology, we'll sort of help you with it. We'll, we'll make it a SaaS service, we'll make it easy to install. Like, talk about you know, timing, what, what are the yeah. trends that are driving what you guys are doing? Yeah, that's a great uh, point, Brian. From the timing perspective, I'd add to that, there's a lot of competition in the public cloud space. Sure. With uh, places like Azure and Google really coming on strong. Yeah. And our software is cloud native. That means we've built it for each of those clouds and allows companies to have a non-lock-in multi-cloud uh, strategy. And because it's been built in with each of those companies' uh, APIs, it actually is much simpler to now scale those networks in the public cloud. Right. And so uh, the timing is really perfect, and uh, we see that there's a lot of interest for uh, scaling their networks. Right, and what yeah. you guys do is, is sort of, I mean, networking, you know, Sherry and I know this from Cisco mm -hmm. days, but, but it is somewhat fragmented. What you do on the edge of your networks and the core of your networks are very different. Y you guys aren't getting into the muck of kind of core data center, SDN. This exactly. is very much, how do I get to the edge of a cloud? How do I get to multiple clouds? How do mm -hmm. I keep it secure so there's a security play? Like, who's, who's the buyer? Who's the, you know, what's the thought process? Is it developers? Is it security teams? Who's, you know, who's your, who's your audience? Yeah, so our audience are, are the folks that are either cloud operations or network architect type of, of uh, individuals that are looking to uh, uh, leverage the public cloud. Right. And so it's true, we don't focus in on the data center because we think that's already been handled to a large degree. Right. But once you start talking about public cloud, it is a different uh, environment, it's a completely new stack. Yeah. And so our software is, uh, uh, makes that hybrid connectivity as well as end-to-end -end, uh, networking across So the persona the cloud. was cloud ops, what was the other one? Network uh, operations? Network, network operations, uh, network architects. Well, it's architects. It's got to be very yeah. policy driven. It's, you know, because yes. you could be dealing with an individual person, you could be dealing with a group of people, multiple accounts at a, at a single customer. Like, talk a little bit about how you got to think about policy and, and what's changing in yeah. that space. So, uh, as people started with the cloud, the, typically it was all a flat network, right? And uh, we see, just as in the data center, there was micro-segmentation needing to happen. That segmentation is taking place in the, very rapidly in the cloud. And therefore, you need to have uh, policies uh, around who can access and what resources can access uh, uh, which uh, landing places. Yeah. The incumbents like Cisco, these guys, they have existing networks. So it seems that they'd be an obvious choice to go into this area. Is it because they're just so big and you guys are <laughs> nimble? Is it the uh, competitive strategy? What's the competitive um, strike that you guys are, are making here? The traditional network equipment and vendors, uh, their, their model is around uh, instance-based appliances. And so they've, uh, you can virtualize that software and put it in the cloud. The difference though with our software is that it's software defined. So it's uh, designed for the cloud. And so our instances understand where it is and use the APIs. So therefore it's a full, it's a full network as opposed to just uh, uh, disparate machines that have to be configured manually. Right. And so we're trying to lower the bar just like uh, Docker is democratizing containers. We're looking to de democratize the network in the cloud. Well, and I think yeah. we see a lot of the incumbents sort of want to they, don't, they want to slow you down from using the cloud. They'd like you to stay on premise. They'd like you to sort of keep the status quo. Uh, you know, you're fighting inertia doing that. We're seeing yeah. developers have more, more say, people want access to resources faster. Like, you guys are part of that trend that say, hey look, what, when you want to you know, stop doing the status quo, we're, we're there to help you, you, know, help you do that. Yeah. Yes, I, I yeah. I see the cloud is in the second phase, and that's really, uh, first phase was more about uh, test and development, uh, fairly uh, uncritical projects, yeah. or, or uh, ways to experiment. Now right, so that's what, been proven, so, so what's your really what's scary. your plan? You got some cash in the bank, mm -hmm. you guys are hiring, obviously you're a startup. Take us through the day in the life, what's the plan for mm -hmm. next year? Um, just keep on building product, obviously, because of the product market. Um, any other big plans? Well, we're, we're scaling the organization. Uh, we've also, uh, at DockerCon, uh, launched a, a new product for the community here. We're glad to be part of the Docker ecosystem, and it's called Project Skyhook. And uh, it solves the problem of, uh, of 
uh, allowing developers to access those containers with policy. That's simply missing there today. As you said, Brian, policy. And you guys are targeting today. the policy aspect specifically. Uh, policy, user base access with multi factor authentication. That's, that's right. correct. Yeah. Yes. So that is actually built. So we talked about hybrid cloud. Another big part of our product is actually uh, for the all in cloud or the internet born companies where every resource, everything is in the cloud, but you still need to access them. And you want to access them with, uh, you know, a much stronger security posture with the granular access control and also provide end to end. Like uh, Brian was mentioning, why, why, where's your, why is the need for this product? There are many needs because of segmentation, because of chargeback, because of the growing presence, because of multi-regions where you want to bring your application to the user. So the, 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 the environments are actually really increasing. So to build an end-to-end -end connectivity from user to end instance is really another big part of our product, another big chunk of our customers. Now we're just bringing that access control and policy into containers, which like Steven says, it's completely missing today. Um, well congratulations, you guys fill in a great void. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Uh, hot startup, Aviatrix. Steven and Sherry, co-founders of Aviatrix. We're here at DockerCon live, talking to all the smartest people we can, startups, to VCs, to the CEO of Docker, and many more here on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Brian Gracely. You're watching theCUBE, we'll be right back.